Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our text for this 19th Sunday after Pentecost is from our Gospel reading, Matthew chapter 22, verse 4. Again, he sent out other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and fatted cattle are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. Here ends our text. This parable that Jesus presents to us caught my attention immediately, and maybe it did yours too, because it's so foreign to us in this post-COVID world that we're living in. Parties, banquets, celebration, that's not what we're used to these days, is it? At times, we've even been barred from having any type of social gathering. It's mainly been driving by in our cars and honking our horns and waving, and nobody was really invited to get out of their cars to celebrate even. But as cases have gone down and eased a bit, well, restrictions were also eased, and, and according to the size of the venue, now you can have a certain number of people, but of course you always got to maintain that social distancing. You can't be dancing too close to another person, and there's one piece of attire that you always got to have, and that's the mask. How we miss the good old days of just going to a wedding reception without all the rules and the worries. How we miss going and enjoying the occasion. So when we hear about this wedding banquet today in our gospel reading with no restrictions, just come and enjoy, it strikes us as being out of this world, doesn't it? Well, it is out of this world. Because the parable of this wedding banquet that Jesus tells on Tuesday of Holy Week is again about heavenly things that are being offered to sinful, earthly people like you and to me. The banquet invitation is given to you and to me. And to everybody in this world, pre-COVID, post-COVID, it's given to you to come. Come for all is ready. Come and believe that Jesus is the Savior. Ever since God told Abraham that he would be the father of many nations, God sent his servants to the people over and over again with this invitation to the wedding banquet. God's chosen people, the Israelites, were especially sent many prophets over the centuries. And this invitation to the wedding banquet was an invitation to believe in the coming Messiah, the salvation that God would work through the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ. Our Old Testament reading is one example of this invitation. And in this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of choice pieces, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of well-refined wines on the lees, and he will destroy on this mountain the surface of the covering cast over all people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the rebuke of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. He would accomplish this through the seed of Abraham. What an amazing feast the Lord has prepared. The choicest of meats, the best of wines that have matured on the lees of the yeast to become full-bodied wines. Oh, what is the cause of such celebration? Isaiah tells us in chapter 25, doesn't he? It is the ending of death. Death is swallowed up. Death, which has been a veil over all people and has caused so much sadness and tears, is no longer. Oh, how our community here in the Rio Grande Valley has mourned for much of this summer over the loved ones who have died because of covid but God's word tells us that there is a reason for celebration, even in the face of death. For death does not have the final word. The Lord will destroy on this mountain, this special mountain called Golgotha, man's worst enemy. The Lord would do this through the sending of his son, Jesus Christ, the bridegroom of today's parable. For as we heard last week in the parable of the wicked vine dressers, the son would be the last to be sent, and he would be killed also. 
He who was the stone was rejected by the builders and became the chief cornerstone. This was marvelous in our eyes. Why is this marvelous? Because he who was dead rises over death three days later. And this is how the rebuke is lifted from all God's people. There is no longer any condemnation in Christ Jesus. Who would not want to attend such a celebration? Who would not want to go to a feast where life has won over death and death has lost its sting? We hear this in 1 Corinthians 15, 55. How could this invitation to life in Jesus Christ ever be rejected? And yet it is rejected by many. Oh, how our parables describe the reaction of the never repenters. I have more important things to do. Affairs to attend to, businesses to attend to, the things of this world. And they made light of the invitation. The Israelites, they did not take time to hear, meditate, and enjoy the precious gospel invitation. They even killed the messengers. Well, Jesus is not letting up for one moment. He's not letting these chief priests or elders off the hook as he continues to speak to them through these parables. For the vine dressers who beat the servants and killed them are the same ones that received the invitation to the wedding banquet and killed the messengers. We see the absurdity in the actions of the Jewish leaders. Who kills another for simply giving them an invitation to a wedding? But that's exactly what they did to the prophets, and then they did it to Jesus. Again, Jesus emphasizes that none of this goes unnoticed. There are consequences for the violent rejection of the invitation to believe in Jesus. For the invitation to the wedding banquet is the gospel call of salvation. What are the consequences? Well, as we heard last week in the parable of the wicked vine dressers, Jesus said, He will destroy those murderers miserably. Jesus describes in greater detail in today's parable again what miserably means. Their city will be destroyed. It will be burned to the ground. As we heard last week, this happened in 70 A.D. when Jerusalem was destroyed. But that's not even the end. For the Lord declares that these unbelievers were not worthy to enter the banquet. And at the end of the parable, a very detailed description is given of the destruction of the unworthy. Bind him hand and foot. Take him away. Cast him into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The rebuke of the unrepentant sinner remains upon him, and the veil of death is not lifted. An eternity of hell awaits the person who rejects the wedding banquet, rejects the invitation to believe in Jesus Christ. But the wedding banquet, the wedding feast, does not get canceled. No. God plans do not change because many refuse to believe. No. God wants His wedding feast to be filled with people. He wants the banquet hall to be filled. He wants all people to be saved. And here we see the extraordinary mercy and the extraordinary zeal of God to reach out to all sinful men. For the invitation was not limited to the Jewish people. The covenant nation who rejected Jesus, no. The vineyard was taken away from them, as we heard last week, and given to others who would bring forth fruits, fruits of faith. The invitation to the wedding is extended to all people to come, for all still remains ready. The king... God himself redoubles his efforts to get the invitation out to the highways. Go now, as many as you can find. There is no pre-qualification to who can come. Having a past criminal record or a sordid past does not disqualify you. No, both good and bad in the eyes of men are invited. You know, that even includes those tax collectors and harlots that we heard about in the parable of the two sons. The ones who said, no, I'm not going to go, but later relented, repented, and went. All are most welcome, for everything is ready. All one has to do is to come. You come as you are. You come as you are because you will receive a wedding robe that makes sure everyone knows you are part of the banquet. The wedding robe makes you worthy. 
The wedding robe is the righteousness of the Savior Jesus Christ, who gives His righteousness to you and takes your sinful rags. Now, if you still want to wear your sinful rags, well, that will become obvious to the king too. In this world, nobody can tell who's wearing the sinful rags and who's got the, the righteousness of Jesus, for sure. In this world, there are hypocrites. But come judgment day, the king can tell. And those with the sinful rags will be thrown out. Many are called, but few are chosen. Many want to hold on to their own self-righteousness instead of humbling themselves with contrite hearts and believing in Jesus as their Savior. Who are those who are invited on the highways? Well, it's the Gentiles. It's you and me. The gracious invitation has reached our ears too. Oh, don't ever turn it down. It is the invitation to life in heaven for all eternity. It is an eternity with God and with all believers in Jesus Christ. And the best part that is that everything, and I do mean everything, is ready. Jesus made all things ready when he died on the cross and made that perfect sacrifice of his life for the sins of the whole world. He said, it is finished, and there is nothing more that needs to be prepared. Your complete salvation has been won for you and for all mankind. And Jesus has opened up heaven to you. The gates of heaven have been opened by his perfect sacrifice. The veil in the temple has been torn and the veil of death has been lifted. This is the most important invitation in your life. And if you refuse it, there aren't any other offers that will come to you on judgment day. For the many, the many who do not believe will be thrown out of the banquet where there is an eternity of weeping and gnashing of teeth. For the few who believe in Jesus, it is their marriage feast. For Jesus is the bridegroom. The church is his bride. Jesus presents his bride as pure and spotless. As we know from Ephesians chapter 5, Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Oh, what love the Father has for us, that he would send his Son, Son to give himself for the church. And by the washing of water, by the word, baptism, that is, we receive the perfect washing of all of our sins, and we receive the spotless robe of Christ's righteousness. You who believe in Jesus are wearing the robe of righteousness. You are ready to enter into the wedding banquet. Even now, as we await for the heavenly feast to begin, you are wearing what Christ has given to you through faith. And as we wait, we treasure our invitation, don't we? We read his word and we hear his gospel promises in all the many beautiful ways that they're spoken of in scripture. We who have been invited to come into his vineyard are called then to bear fruit, bear fruit of the faith that we have been given, fruit of repentance and fruit of service to our Lord. We come to receive strength to, to serve him in his vineyard for he gives us his gracious invitation to come to his table. Come and eat of his very body and his blood given to you and shed for you for your forgiveness to reassure us that all things are ready, that our heavenly banquet is awaiting us. God moves us by his Holy Spirit. He moves each of us to have that same unrelenting compassion to other people, to go to all the highways, to as many as we find, and invite them to hear these precious words. Invite them to know that Jesus is the Savior of the world. On your highway of life, as you meet many, invite many, both good and bad, don't prejudge. Hum ask them to humble themselves. Implore them to humble themselves before Jesus the King and accept His gracious invitation to life, to believe in Him and have eternal life. So there are not that many party, parties or banquets that are going on right now because of COVID-19. We're all trying to still be extremely cautious and trying not to spread the virus. But there is one banquet that still is happening. 
There is one banquet that has never been canceled, and all of God's people are called to spread this invitation to as many as you find. It's a simple invitation. All things are ready. Come to the wedding feast. For Jesus Christ has died and he has risen for you. Come to the wedding. Believe in Jesus and you will be saved eternally. Is it no wonder that Paul says in our epistle reading, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasseth all human understanding. Guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.